In this video, I'm going to summarize my 8 years of learning game development. My journey began back in 2013 with a software called Scratch. Scratch back then wasn't exactly the Scratch we see today. Back in those days, you couldn't use Scratch online. You had to download it and upload your projects using Scratch 1.4, probably the worst version of Scratch to this day. Well, probably except for Scratch Jr. In 2013, I was first introduced to Scratch and I created my first project along with the help of my brother and it was called Don't Burn Mimi. It was basically a blatant ripoff of Pong, but there was a special twist. This head actually here that's my sister i just took a picture twisted it around and slapped it over this ball and also there's a trampoline over lava in the snow yeah don't ask i even played my own backing track for the game yeah that's me playing the piano back in 2013 and that is also Mario. I shared the project and got barely any loves and favorites, but that didn't discourage me. I figured I could get the hang of this scratch thing and master creating video games in no time. Three years later. I had created about 20 projects in the meantime while learning Scratch. On YouTube, there wasn't really any Scratch tutorials for beginners, so I basically had to teach myself what the blocks did. But to be honest, Scratch isn't that difficult to learn. I mean, move 10 steps? Who couldn't know what that meant? I was learning the process of creating a full video game, from creating ideas, to the art, to sound effects and music. I love the journey of making a game from start to finish. The game I created in this period was Jetpack City. This was my first pixel art game, where instead of having smooth strokes, you use individual pixels to draw the art. It was bad, but back then, I was involving. Even the 10 second intro, I remember I put this as a gift from iMovie. I'm even wondering right now how it even uploaded to Scratch. And I'm pretty sure this was the first game of mine that ever got popular. It got top loved, I think, and curated. I remember that. It did get curated. Yeah, this game is definitely terrible. Let's check out some of my other ones. Next, we have Bullet Bird. I remember spending so long on this project. That logo, that took me like five hours to make. I was still learning how to make a game. And also that shop with the, you could get a bullet, you could change your bird for a hundred, a hundred, a hundred coins, is that right? And eyes and this health bar. That took me a day or two at least. It was I was struggling. I was first learning how to do things like algorithms and using the operators. And that scrolling background also, that took me... Actually, that didn't take me too long, but I was still figuring out how to use Scratch. And this game also got curated and top loved. I, I still don't know how. Yeah, so in this game, you're just jumping around birds. That's it. It's it's so simple. Pretty sure you could shoot. Okay, okay. so you're using the right arrow to shoot. That's easier now. I need to get a hundred of these to change my skin. That bird though, pretty clean. Pretty clean bird. I respect it. So next in 2017, we have Top Down City. I found this cool scratch tutorial on YouTube that showed you how to get this 3D effect. So I went ahead and followed it and I got this and these buildings. And I, I added these, I think they're bacteria, just because the game wasn't really any fun. This game is actually pretty boring. You're just fighting for control over the universe in your car. But instead of driving over enemies, you use a gun that's strapped to your car to shoot them down. Yeah, not, nothing too complicated. I even remember I put some famous scratchers heads down here. Back then we had stickman animations and that was Dilly. One year later, in 2018, during this year I had begun to polish up my game development skills by putting in things like menus. Yeah, look at these buttons. I was spending pretty long on the graphic design now and it was showing. So we have Jetpack Ninja, and I also had a pretty cool logo. So in this game, you're just shooting aliens with ninja stars. That's that's the premise. I drew everything else, but those aliens, I got, I stole it off of some website. So yeah, you could see a clear improvement in the graphics and the code. It's a lot neater. It's not perfectly organized, but it's all right. I'm never organized. So there appears to be a bug. Four years later, and I still haven't fixed it. Going forward, I slowly increased my skill. I wanted to expand from normal Scratch. For this game, I actually followed a Scratch tutorial on YouTube, and after about a day of straight coding, finally got my first 3D game in Scratch. Wait, I'm still figuring out that the controls, hold on. Okay, it's left and right to move around. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the controls are weird, but this wasn't actually 3D. It's called ray casting. It's the illusion of 3D by using some complicated math, because of course, this is Scratch. So ray casting is just a bunch of math that projects your 2D level onto the screen and it shows it with depth. So you can see I actually drew my name there. And when you move around, the player in the game moves around and so does the level. Okay, let me go to my name. I want to see what that looks like in 3D. I thought it would look a lot better. What? This looks so ugly. Yes, this was Sully Bully 2018. 
Now we are approaching the pinnacle of my career on Scratch, from 2020 to 2022. It's here that I think I finally mastered making awesome games on Scratch, and it's around the time I reached about 7,000 followers, gained over the course of 7 years. By now my most popular game was the Airplane series. In this game, you're basically taking control of this guy, and you're just scrolling along in an infinite world of clouds, the sky, and you're just shooting down these red enemies. So I still have no idea why this game got so popular, it's so simple. So I made a series of it. We have Airplane 1. Thankfully, there's still remixes of my games when they got deleted. Then we had Airplane 3. The art clearly was improving, like the background clouds, but the game was basically the same. And the last one was Airplane 5. And this one I actually made into a Unity game because I thought it was so good back then. So this is the one I remade in Unity, Airplane. As you can see, I spent, I think it was three months on this. Yo, this game it even has multiplayer. I remember working on that multiplayer, it took so long. I don't know about you, but I like the Unity version better. And I also got like a, an upgrade system, where you could upgrade different parts of your play. So all of these games, the ones I remade in Unity at least, I ended up putting them on Google Play. You could still download them also to this day. We even had different worlds. We have Central Park, Atlantis, Over Earth, and Russia for some reason. We even had a shop where you could buy stuff. Ah, I just, I just bought it? What? I wasn't supposed to do that. You're supposed to actually pay for that. So if you want to, you can go ahead and play it on the Google Play and itch.io. Another game that I made in this period is Space. In this game, you basically switched back and forth between the walls and it was synced along to the music. It's okay, it lags every time, but I could do so much better. So one year later, I made Space all alone. No, it was Space Never Let Me Go. So yeah, the drastic improvement. Hopefully I don't die. <laughs> I really want you guys to see the bass drop. In all space games, there's a bass drop. And then in there, we have Space All Alone. So as you can see, this game is so polished. I mean, the effects are absolutely amazing. Music is so good. It's copyrighted. It shows how far I've come along in the years. I was once a bad programmer. Over time, my games improved. My art improved. My organization skills, they did not improve. If you guys would like me to remake space in Unity, go ahead and leave a comment. Then of course, like everything, all good things come to an end. And when I started focusing on this YouTube channel more, Scratch didn't like that. I have a theory though. The Scratch team is actually jealous that I had more subscribers than them, so they banned me on Scratch. And in the end, I got banned for sharing my YouTube channel. I've moved on in life from this website for five years. Stop the cap! <laughs> My games are a thousand times better than when I first started Scratch, and I'm happy. I can't wait to see the progress I start moving forward. I want to start making videos on something other than Scratch. I do know some other game engines like Unity 3D and Unreal Engine, and I can make some pretty cool things that aren't possible in Scratch, like 3D, real-time multiplayer with actual servers. Watch this video where I tried to make a multiplayer first-person shooter in Unity in one day. And of course, if you want to make me see more videos, game development stories, or even more Scratch videos, make sure to like and subscribe. We post a video every week and you can't miss out so make sure to turn on notifications thank you for watching my progress of game development over eight years it really was a journey and i'm happy with the progress that i've made thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in another video